Welcome. In this video, let's explore the concept of the time value of money. Let's first look at what it's all about, and then we'll learn how to quantify it. Imagine you loan $100 to your best friend. All things being equal, you would prefer to receive your $100 back sooner rather than later. You'd rather be paid back in one week rather than one year. That's the idea of time value of money, that all things being equal, we prefer to receive our cash flows sooner rather than later. And there are three factors behind the time value of money. The first idea is opportunity cost. Because your friend owes you the $100, they are denying you the opportunity to invest that somewhere else, or at least putting it in the bank and earning interest. That's the idea of opportunity cost. You are deprived of the opportunity to reinvest that money somewhere else. The second idea is risk. The longer your friend delays paying you back, the greater the chance that something could go wrong. For example, maybe your friend decides to move away, then it would be harder to collect that $100. The longer we have to wait for repayment of that loan, the greater the likelihood is that something could go wrong. That's the idea of risk. And the third idea is inflation. That's the increase in prices over time. So $100 in one year does not buy you as much as it does today. So you'd rather have your $100 paid back sooner rather than later. Those are the three ideas behind the time value of money. Let's now learn how to quantify it. Imagine I have $100 and I'm walking down the street and I pass the bank. And there's a sign in front of the bank, 10% interest on deposit accounts. So I can earn 10% per year if I deposit the $100 in the bank. I know that's crazy but let's just work with 10% for this example. Something we might do is think about how much money we'll have in the future after we deposit that $100 today. And it might look like this. When I deposit that $100 in the bank, I have $100 today. At the end of one year, I will have earned 10% interest, so I can multiply the 100 by 1.1, that's 100% plus 10%, and I will have in the bank $110. If I leave the money in the bank for another year, that will again grow at 10%. And at the end of year two, I will have $121. And if I keep that money in the bank at the end of year three, multiply again by 1.1, 10% interest, I'll have $133.10. That's the idea of the future value of money. And as many of you know, we have just demonstrated the concept of compounding. And I could have taken a shortcut. If I wanted to understand how much money I would have in the bank at the end of year three, I could have done this. 100 multiplied by 1.2. One, let's put the 10 there just to make it clear that's 10%. And then that would be to the power of 3. And 
the product of that would be $133.10. We can express that idea in an equation. We could say this, P for principal multiplied by 1 plus I, that's the interest rate, to the power of N is equal to the future value of money, the future value of that principal. In the example above, it was $100 multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.10 for 10% to the power of 3 was equal to 133.10. That was the idea of compounding. Let's now look at discounting and the present value of money concept. We have the same situation at the bank. Interest on deposit accounts is 10%. But rather than try and understand how much money I'll have at the end of three years, I would like to have $100 in the bank at the end of three years. In other words, at the end of year three, I would like to have $100 sitting in my bank account. What I deposit today will earn interest and compound. So my question is solving for X in the now column. How much do I have to deposit today to have $100 sitting in the bank at the end of year three? We can express that in an equation. We could say that X multiplied by 1.1 or 1.10 to the power of 3 is equal to $100. So how do we solve for x? Well, x will be equal to 100 divided by 1.1 to the power of 3, or x is equal to 100 divided by 1.331 x guys is equal to 75.13 so if I would like $100 in the bank at the end of year 3 today I deposit $75.13 and after three years of compounding at 10% it will reach $100. And that idea is called the present value. Let's compare the present versus the future value. We are talking about the time value of money, and let's keep it simple with that $100 and the 10% interest. And we're talking about a three-year time horizon. So we've got now, we've got the end of year one, that's one year into the future, two years into the future, and three years into the future. If we are starting today with $100 in the bank and we would like to know how much we'll have at the end of year three, that's the idea of compounding and that tells us the future value of money. And we would find that by multiplying 100 by 1.1 to the power of 3, and we would arrive at x. If we would like $100 at the end of year 3, and we're trying to answer how much should we deposit now, that is called discounting, 
and now we're finding the present value of $100 in three years time. So discounting is looking for the present value. In this case, we're solving for x. And another way to represent that then is this. One hundred multiplied by one over one point one to the power of three is equal to x. That's a nice way to rearrange the formula. So we can summarize the two formulas now. Compounding versus discounting. 100 dollars times 1.1 to the power of 3 is equal to the future value or the present value times 1 plus i to the power of n the number of years is equal to the future value of money and if we are discounting we're going to be solving for the present value so that would be present value multiplied by 1.1 to the power of 3 is equal to 100 or we could say that future value times 1 over 1 plus interest to the number of years is equal to the present value. So if we would like to understand how much money we'll have in three years time if we deposit $100 today, we'll use this formula. And if we'd like to understand how much we have to deposit today, so we will have $100 at the end of year three, we would use this formula. Friends, that's a look at the basics behind time value of money.